In this tutorial, we will be looking at parts. Open SolidWorks. You may see a pop-up window on the right-hand side. This will go away when you click in the main window. Click on New File at the top of the screen. SolidWorks has three types of files. Parts, which are like individual building blocks. Assemblies, where we join parts together to make more complicated things. And drawings, which are two-dimensional versions of parts and assemblies. In this tutorial, we are going to make a part. So select part and either double click or click OK. In the SolidWorks window, there are distinct areas. The top section is called the ribbon and it will change depending on what you are doing. We will be using the feature ribbon and sketch ribbon to make our part. The left hand side is called the feature manager and it will also change depending on what feature we are using. In the feature manager you can see the three default planes that we can access in SolidWorks but we can create more if we need to. The centre area is our drawing area and the right hand side has a pop-up window with additional features. To start our part we need to create an extruded boss base. This means a three-dimensional shape. When we click on extruded boss base, SolidWorks asks us which default plane we want to build on. Because we want our block to be resting on the ground, we are going to choose top plane. You can see when I hover over each plane it turns orange so I can see which one I'm on. When I click on top plane, it will spin around and disappear. And now in Feature Manager, you can see that a sketch has appeared. The ribbon has also changed to give me the sketch ribbon and the origin is clearly visible in the drawing area. It's always a good idea to start your drawings at the origin. We are going to draw a basic rectangle. Click on the rectangle button. You can see that the Feature Manager automatically changes to reflect this. It also shows us the order we have to click to draw the shape. The basic rectangle requires two clicks bottom left and top right. To start my rectangle, I'm going to click on the origin and then move my cursor up to the right and click again. It doesn't matter what size the rectangle is because we will change that later. Click on the green tick to close the rectangle feature manager. To add dimensions to the rectangle, we will use the smart dimension function on the sketch ribbon. Hover over the edge you want to dimension and it will turn orange. Click the edge to select it, and pull your cursor away and click again to place the dimension. A pop-up window will appear asking for the dimension that you want. I am going to put in 50, it assumes that you want millimetres. Click the green tick to close the pop-up. We can now dimension the other side in the same way. You can see that the rectangle has changed size to reflect the dimensions that I've put in, but the rectangle is also off to one side. To recenter it, we can click the Zoom to Fit button located at the top of the drawing area. Now we are ready to finish our boss base. Currently, we have a two dimensional sketch, which you can see as I change the view using the arrow keys on my keyboard. When I click the Exit Sketch button, SolidWorks remembers that I was making a boss base and brings up the relevant feature manager. I can either raise or lower the shape using my mouse or I can enter a specific measurement into the feature manager. This is a much more precise method. Again, it assumes I'm using millimetres, but this is something you can change if you need to. When you are done, click the green tick to close the feature manager. As I move the block view around using the arrow keys, you can see that it is now a three-dimensional shape. But to arrange the view in a more precise way, I can tap the spacebar to bring up the orientation box and choose Isometric View. Now we are going to make the block pins on the top of the block. Back on the feature ribbon, I am going to select Extruded Boss Base again. But you can see that I have a wider variety of options available to me now. Again, SolidWorks asks where I'd like the feature to be but this time I can choose an existing sketch or a plane or a face of an existing block. We are going to use the top face of the block. When I hover on it, you can see that the edges turn orange to show you what face you are selecting. 
When I click on the top face, you can see that a new sketch has appeared in the Feature Manager. However, it isn't very easy to draw a two-dimensional sketch when the block is at this angle. I can try to arrange it myself, but it's much easier to tap the spacebar to bring up the orientation box. On here, there is a button called Normal To, which will arrange the view so whichever plane your sketch is on, it will make it flat and easy to work on. This time we are going to draw a series of circles. When I click the circle button, it brings up the relevant feature manager and again shows how I have to click to create the shape. I'm going to draw eight circles. It doesn't really matter where they are or how big they are because we will sort that out later. SolidWorks uses dotted lines to help you line things up. I will close the circle feature manager by clicking in the green tick and now we can use smart dimension on one of the circles. It asks me for the diameter, again assuming millimetres. The circle changes size to reflect the new dimension. Now I could individually dimension each circle, but SolidWorks has a system in place where you can create relationships or rules between things. By holding down the shift key and clicking on each circle, I can select them all. I can then select equals, which tells SolidWorks they are all the same size. Now we need to use smart dimensions and relationships to line the circles up. I will start by setting the distance between a circle and the right edge. Click on the centre of the circle. It will change colour to show it has been selected. Then click on the edge. Smart dimension assumes that you are setting a distance between these two points. Now we can do the same between the circle and the top edge. Then we can add dimensions between the circles. This time, click on the centre of each circle and add a dimension. If your smart dimension looks like it's at an angle, just adjust your mouse until it looks straight. We also need to dimension one of the bottom circles with the bottom edge. Then we can start adding relationships. I'm going to start by making the centre of the circles line up. Holding the shift key allows me to select more than one centre. In the feature manager, I have the option to add relations. I'm going to choose horizontal and then all the centres will line up with the one that has a smart dimension applied. Now I can repeat this process with the bottom row of circles. And finally, I can add relationships between the vertical circles. When a shape has been fully defined by dimensions and relationships, it turns black. Now we can exit the sketch and set the height of the boss base. And by tapping on the spacebar to bring up the orientation box, I can change the view to isometric. Now, the height of this block looks out of proportion. Fortunately, you can always go back and change previous sketches and features. In the feature manager, you can see the two boss faces that I have already made. I'm going to move the rollback bar up so I can change the first boss face I made.
I can now expand the first boss base to reveal the sketch I made earlier. But I want to change the height, which is governed by the height I entered into the boss base feature. So, if I left click on the feature and choose the Edit Feature button, I can change the height. Then I can move the rollback bar back down again, and you can see that this block looks much more in proportion. We now need to create the corresponding block pin holes on the bottom of the block. This time, we are going to use a different feature called Extruded Cut, which as the name suggests, removes material instead of creating it. Again, SolidWorks asks which sketch, plane or face you want the feature on, so I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to turn the block over before selecting the base of the block. Again, you can see that a new sketch has appeared in the Feature Manager. And again, I need to use the orientation box to make the block normal to you so I can easily create the sketch I want. Now, I could repeat the previous process, creating circles, adding dimensions and relationships, but it's much quicker just to copy the previous sketch I made as they're going to end up identical. On the sketch ribbon, I am going to click Convert Entities. And the Feature Manager changes to reflect this. but the normal feature manager has appeared in the top left of the drawing area. By expanding this part, and again the relevant boss base, I can find the sketch with the circles on it. When I select the sketch, it appears in the blue box on the feature manager and shows a preview on the block. Clicking the green tick closes the feature manager and you can now see the finished sketch. All that's left to do is exit the sketch and add the height of the extruded cut, and then you can see the finished block. We could leave this building block with its default grey appearance, but it would look much better with a different material and colour. To change this, we need to go to the pop-up window on the right-hand side and click on the multicoloured beach ball. This brings up the Appearances, Scenes and Decals menu. If I click on Appearances, you can see that I have two options, colour and texture. But if I expand the Appearances menu, I have more options. If I click on plastics as my materials choice, I have a wider range of options, but you can expand this once more to show specific types of plastics. I am going to choose a red medium gloss plastic. I need to drag and drop the material onto my block, but I must keep my mouse still when I release it because SolidWorks give me some options to choose from. I need to choose where I want to apply this material. In this case, I will choose body, so the whole block looks the same. Finally, I need to save it in a logical place with a logical name. Using the recommended dimensions worksheet from your teacher, create a variety of building blocks ready for next week's lesson on assemblies.